In this video, we're going to take a look at transforming toolpaths. So here you can see just a simple plaque that I've created. Now, the main reason that you would do this would be maybe you created a job with some proven toolpaths on there and you wanted to move them or rotate them, let's say for instance, without having to even bother with the vectors. Let's say that you happen to have maybe deleted the vectors, for instance. Okay, so here you can see that I've got this plaque and let me just turn on the toolpath so we can see them. So if I turn off the vectors and I'm just going to turn on the 3D toolpaths. Okay, so you can just see the red toolpaths on there. So if I select one of the toolpaths, let's say V-bit carving, you get an option under the splitter bar and one of those is to transform the toolpaths. So if I click that, then you can see that I get a list of the toolpaths and I select which one that I want. So let's say the V-bit carving and then what I can do is move this around. So let's say that the V-bit carving, I actually wanted to move it up a little bit because I wanted to put something underneath it. So let's say one inch and then move up. Okay, so that's moved that toolpath upwards without me having to do anything to the vectors. Okay, the vectors are still in the same position. If I turn those on, you can see that they're still in the same position. Okay, so maybe if I want to bring it back, I can bring it back down. You can also rotate it. So let's say that I wanted to rotate it 90 degrees. I can rotate that around and I could do it upside down if I wanted to. Okay, so you can also do this on different tools. So let's say if I wanted to do it on the groove, I could move that maybe like so, rotate that around. So you can do this on any toolpaths that you have in that list. Now, personally, I don't really use this that much. I would rather just copy or edit the vectors and then regenerate the toolpath. Now, you also have mirror down the bottom, so you can flip the toolpath. The one reason that I do use this quite often is the project onto relief down the bottom. So I'll show you how that works. So basically you can create a 2D toolpath and then project that onto a relief, okay? So I'll show you how to do that. So if I just close this. So let's say that I create maybe a shape. So let's draw a circle like so, okay? and maybe a square here, like so. And I'm going to use the shape editor on that. Let's rotate around, do a round dome there. Maybe give it a start height of, let's say 0.2 and apply. Let's select this one here. And I'm going to just give this one a start height let's say quarter of an inch and make sure that I've got let's say merge high on there okay and then cancel that and then what I can do is delete those I don't really need them so if I take a plan view of this now and I'm just going to draw some text over that what I'm going to do first of all is machine this though, okay? So let's just do a quick machine relief over this. Over the whole relief, I'm not too fussed about this. I just want to show you what it actually does. So if I use, let's say, a quarter inch, I'll just use the default settings for it, half an inch roughing. Let's set up the material so it's Material thickness, let's say it's one and a quarter inch and calculate it. Okay, so this is just going to machine all of that. 
Okay, so let me simulate that and you can see that it should give me pretty much the same sort of thing. Okay, now I'm not too fussed about these cusps around the edge. It doesn't really affect what I want to show you. I want to basically machine some text over the top of this instead of actually generating it in 3D. Okay, so let's delete the simulation and then let's take a plan view and let's create some text here. Okay, let's make it a little bit larger, let's say like so, and I'm going to call it project. Okay, and I'm not too fussed about the size, I'm just going to create it, center that in the model, and then I'm going to transform it. Okay, press Alt then on the keyboard so it goes from the center. Okay, so that looks like it's going over the whole thing. Now, if I were to just machine this normally, so I would do an area clearance, let's see what happens. So let's say my finished depth is, let's say 0.1. Okay, and I'll select, let's say, 16th of an inch tool, do an offset, and then just calculate it. Okay, and you can see that it's not quite getting in there. So let's remove that. Let's add another tool. Let's use this one. Okay, and you can see that it's creating the toolpath. Okay, so let's expand the toolpaths. Let's select machine relief. Simulate the toolpath. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is use the simulation control bar for the area clearance. And then just press play. So you can see it going around and you can see that it's not machining anything. The reason being is that it's machining fresh air. Okay, because this is a 2D toolpath. So it's just coming from the top down. So when it gets over to here, it will start machining something, but it's only going to give me a few letters. Okay, so if I fast forward that, you can see it's just starting to touch onto this dome. Okay, so let's fast forward it to the end. Okay, so there you can see that's all that it's machining. Okay, and that's not what I want. I want that project to be going over the whole of the thing, okay? Now, what I would strongly suggest that you do before trying to do this is to save the model. The reason being is that you can't undo it. So once you have projected, you won't be able to go back. So I strongly suggest that you save. So I'm going to save this model and I'm just going to call it project, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to project the area clearance onto that relief. So if I delete the simulation and then just show the project, okay? And I'm going to move around so you can see this. Okay, so at the moment you can see that that is all in Z, okay? All up there. Don't worry about these blue lines. I've just got my save Z set up to be really, really high. So if I wanted to sort that out, just go to save Z and let's set that to be maybe quarter of an inch. And my home position, let's say half an inch. So if I calculate that again, you can see that it comes there. Okay. So what I want to do is to make all of the red section actually follow the contour of this relief. Okay. So now, to do that, select the area clear, and then you can select transform toolpaths. So let me just move this over so you can see it. Down at the very bottom, you've got two options. You've got drop tool and you've got project tool. Now the drop tool is basically where it touches on the edge of the tool. So this is mainly if you were say using a ball nose, it would work out where the edge of that ball nose is going to touch on the edge of the relief, okay? Now, project tool, that does it from the center of the tool, 
okay then that's the one that I tend to use most of the time okay so click project on relief and you can see what happens is it basically moves everything there so it goes over that relief okay now as I said before you can't go back from this so that's why I told you to save it okay so if I rotate around now you can see that this is projected over the top of that relief so if I were to simulate that relief now you can see exactly the same as before if I do this one now with the control bar and play you can see it's actually cutting onto that relief so let me fast forward this now obviously you will have angles on the text because of the tool okay so here you can see that there's this angle on the text obviously it's not five axes so it can't rotate the head of the tool okay so there you can see it's created my text going over the top of that so that's how you project toolpaths and that's how you transform toolpaths